What's up? How's everybody doing? Give me just a minute here on my side of the things and we'll be getting going in no time at all. For the next hour or so, I'm going to be your host. My name is Matt. The Grass Factor. Martin. How is everybody doing? Welcome aboard the Lawn Care Help Desk. We're going to try and get this figured out. My mic is all kinds of messed up. I broke a piece off on the mount, so I got I to gotta go down. It is out though. My wife got this for me. I got to say, I absolutely love it. What is this? A little face melting. All right, all right. So, trying to pick up the pieces after my life after uh, going to Delaware. So, it was kind of crazy. Uh, I was out of town, came back in town, left to go to Delaware, came back, and then had to go out of town again. Uh, life on the road! I don't know how else to describe it, but boy, oh boy. <laughs> I'm too down. I'm too down on the buttons, Turf Man, OSU Turf Man. Listen, Mr. Mr. Mitchell. All right, all right, all right, all right. Uh, so, welcome aboard. Like I said, this uh, this show for the next hour or so is going to be the Lawn Care Help Desk, and this is an open format, meaning you ask questions, I provide answers, I do my best to answer questions as accurately as possible. Please understand, I am human, I am fallible, I do make mistakes. I am just a mere peon in the grand scheme of things. So, if there's any kind of suggestions or anything I make here, please double check. Now, oftentimes, I won't know the answer, or two, I will get tripped up and confused on what I'm talking about and make a recommendation for one thing when I'm thinking about another thing, and it just starts going, oh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so, yeah, you know, it just, it'll get bizarre. That being said, that being said, feel free to go ahead and start throwing uh, questions in the chat. I will start at the top of the chat and work my way to the bottom of the chat. I know today is February 1st, so lawn care has got to be starting to be on people's minds. It has to. It has to. Because I could just tell that my phone is ringing nonstop right now, literally nonstop. I'm, I'm averaging right now 30 calls a day. And it, the, the, it starts to give me <laughs> anxiety a little bit, but... Lots of cool things are going on. So, real quick, a little a little housekeeping. Um, this week we'll be doing the uh, the launch of the of the product prefix. Uh, for those of you that don't know, it has been available only to the people that are members of the channel. I'm not saying you need to join or whatever, but uh, that would kind of did a little soft thing there, so we could uh, refine the manufacturing process and make sure um, that is going to happen. Look at you, Alexander Thomas. It's crabgrass a scam. It is a scam. Um, so this will uh, the prefix uh, product will be uh, will be coming out this week, 
and uh, we'll go we'll go live with that, and that should be a good time. Uh, you can check out, learn more about that over at SubvertMPK.com. Also, be sure to check out the program planner over on SubvertMPK.com uh, because it is, uh, you know, there's uh, it's, a, it's a useful tool. And I did a little help video, too, to help along with it. Watch. If you, if you have time, look at it. See if it helps. If it doesn't help, tell me. Tell me what I would need to do to, to make it help with you. Um, so there... Yes, that that's that's what I that's the kind of information I need in order to fix things. I need feedback. So uh, anyway, that's that's basically all I got there. So like I said, oh, here is the other thing, too, that I would like to see. And I was trying to figure out how to set it up before the show, but I never could um, is do you like live streams on Monday or Sunday better? And that's 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 how I'm going to ask it. Do you want to see live streams on Monday or do you want to see them on Sunday? Uh, it doesn't matter to me. Uh, just because of how much time I had to spend on the road, I was kind of limited. I was limited in only being able to do it on Monday. So, you know, that's that's what we got to do there. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and get started. If you got a question, feel free to throw it in the chat. I'm going to start at the top and then work my way down to the bottom. Uh, yeah, Gray Fox, I see this, and I, you know, I, t I try and say it a little bit every week. Uh, uh, Carbon Earth is done. No more. We are building again. We are rebuilding the pieces. We are picking up the pieces of our life. It was very tragic. It was very traumatic. Um, you know, at the time we had uh, 17 employees and, you know, some of the employees, a, a wife was undergoing a, uh, a, a heart surgery. And of course, we lost insurance at the time. And it was it was very crazy. Uh, but we have been absolutely busting our ass. Uh, that's why I went to Delaware. I promise you, I do not like to go north of the Mason Dixon line because I don't know what exists up there. It's a totally different world and lifestyle. Although I have to say, Southern Indiana and uh, uh, maybe even parts of Southern Ohio are as redneck as Kentucky. I'll give you that. But if I'm traveling up to Delaware or New York or DC or something like that, you know I'm. I don't venture to Canada often. That's right, Aldo. That is right. I carried my passport with me just in case customs stopped me, and I had to prove or say why I'm uh, uh, why I had to do why why I'm there. Right. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's done. We are rebuilding the pieces. We are hoping to have it launched as quickly as possible. I can't give you a time frame yet because we've still got lawsuits and all kinds of stuff that are taking place, and I have to be very careful with what I say. Uh. It's far enough, Timmy Bluegrass. Don't fight with me on this. <laughs> I mean, I got to say, I got to say, uh, I was shocked, absolutely stunned with how country Delaware was. It was nothing but farmland and chicken farms. And, uh, and boy, that was, I was just like, where am I? Uh, and it was, it was great. It was super cool, actually. Um, so anyway, for those of you that are asking about that or asking, you know, Hey, I'm reaching out to Renovo for pricing or things like that. We don't have any yet. Um, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's different right now because, uh, commodity prices are changing and I'm going to be doing a video about this specifically because, uh, commodity, commodity, uh, uh, prices are, have, have actually jumped pretty significantly, at least for like urea, uh, potash, uh, actually took a, a almost a 25% jump too. And, um, and it's just been, uh, uh urea is up over 40%. Everything is, is skyrocketing right now. And a lot of that has to do with the price of natural gas price of, uh, uh Daytona Tucky. I see, you, I see you, David Watkins. Um, so it's uh, there, there's a lot that I need to, to unpack there. Again, I'll do that in a separate video, especially with minimum wage going up to $15. I know the lawn care industry right now is kind of in a, uh, uh, um, a much deserved uh, kind of panic and trying to figure out how to adjust to all the changes that occur really quickly. And uh, so I thought I would do a video specific to that, at least from my perspective, kind of an outsider perspective at this point. And, uh, and, and just, you know, yeah, there we go. Uh, so starting, it's so great. That was my answer to your question there. Uh, so hope that at least gives you something. Should I call and get a burn permit or ask for forgiveness if my burn, my Bermuda? I, here's the thing. I, 
I would go ahead and tell you to go to go ahead and get a burn permit. Uh, I wish I would have because that was the first thing they asked me when they showed up at my house was, did you have a burn permit? And I was like, oh, no, no, I don't think so. And uh, and they weren't very kind to that, but they were in the long run kind to me. So just going to throw that out there. Why does it seem that so many with Bermuda lawns have so many weeds, uh, Poa annua in it this year? I have Kentucky bluegrass, so kind of hard to tell. Uh, it's happening every year, Super TA. It is getting increasingly worse every year. And the, the, the reason why is because resistance is persisting every year and growing every year. And so, uh, you know, people that are continuing to do the same things over and over, uh, and it, it's, it's, it's changing. There's a lot of mutations that are taking place, and you're not going to see the same performance year over year like we used to. The time has run up. Even, you know, it's just starting, and I'm not saying it's here yet, but spectacle is going to begin to decline. Is, it, is this year going to be the year where it's like a noticeably drop in performance? I don't know. I can't answer that. Probably not. Last year was kind of the first observed resistance. And now and now this year, uh, you know, could it be worse potentially? But we don't know. It's yet to be seen. We're kind of in the middle of it right now. So we'll see what universities release, what University of Tennessee releases as they continue their research on that front. But why do Bermuda lawns have so much weed pressure? I would bet, I would bet that either fall conditions were not conducive to either watering in the pre-emergent on time or it was too much rain uh, that moved it too deep in the root zone. That vapor barrier gets pushed down in the, in the root zone um, and is not close enough to the surface to be able to inhibit the cellular, de cellular division at the root tip. Therefore, weeds can establish instead of failing as the weed germinates. So it's kind of hard to say, but that is probably along the lines where I'm going. Uh, Dave Hensel said Monday live shows are better than Sunday, but I noticed over in the comments, people were kind of saying they like Sunday better. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure something out. I should probably just do Sunday and Monday. Maybe. I don't know. Uh, lows in the negative 48 degrees right now. Lots of wind from the North though. Yeah. It's going to be real cold here tonight. I think it's going to be like 28 degrees or something like that. We had snow today, by the way, everybody give a warm welcome to, uh, uh, Jay Pink. He has, has officially moved to Knoxville. Um, my son did more work than I did helping him move in here. So, uh, there's a new grass factor team now. Uh, and, and, uh, it is, it, it, it's my wife. It's, it's John Pinkerton and myself. And we're going to work really hard on producing really good, accurate content this year um, because it's too much for me to be able to handle by myself. And so with a team of people, I can bounce ideas off people and all that fun stuff. So I'm so friggin' excited uh, for, for what this year is going to entail and the different things we're going to be doing with the old, with the old YouTube, because, and I'll be honest with you for a long time, I was not having fun with it. I have fun doing the streams. I really enjoy the streams. And so I continue doing that. But if you notice, I don't make a lot of videos anymore because I don't enjoy that, but really I don't enjoy that because of how long it takes to produce the content and uh, all kinds of other things. You, you know, you got to manipulate algorithms and all this crap, you know, you don't have to. You don't have to. But it's something that starts to creep into your mindset. So, so, um, anyway, it's one of the things now that, uh, you know, if there's a team of people doing on it, it's it's one less, it's, it's a shared responsibility at this point. And uh, it kind of frees us up to be able to brainstorm over different ideas and put out new content. And I'm just super excited about that. Deet Penny said, looking to do some spring seeding to improve turf density. Would it be advisable to do the first round of pre-emergent as a tenacity coin chloride mix and the second half pounder of prodiamine? Um, it could be. Yes, you can totally do that. That would be one way to do that. However, however, um, what I would kind of steer you towards there uh, would be, do you really need tenacity? Or can you just apply quinclorac to tackle any kind of broadleaf weeds that are there? Because really, the first round of pre-emergent, how many weeds are really growing in the lawn? Typically, not many. So if you just need to apply a post-emergent to clean up a little bit here and there, and then just run with it and be good. And there's no reason to spend the additional money on tenacity. Then 
if you after you get your seed established, then you can go ahead and go with something like Prodiamine. But if you're going to be late applying it, I've got a revamp of the video Prodiamine versus uh, Dithiapir coming up soon. Um, but if you are applying a later application like that, you would be better off using Dithiapir than you would be Prodiamine, especially if you're going to be like after April or so making that pre-emergent application. So. Uh, just kind of food for thought there. I, on original thought, just looking at that and seeing including tenacity in it, I'm like, no, why do you need that? But I see why you think that, uh, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be worried about it. I would not and be including it in anything I was doing. Charles Harley said, soil test shows calcium deficiencies. Will adding gypsum as a filler to our FERT blends be beneficial enough for correction and unlock other nutrients? Uh, yes and no. Uh, yes, you can add gypsum as a calcium source, assuming um, you don't need uh, to raise your pH. If you need to raise your pH, uh, uh, gypsum isn't really fulfilling that need for you. Uh, lime, calcitic lime would be a better choice for you. Um, will that unlock other nutrients? N no, not really. <laughs> not really at all. Uh, so I, I don't. I, I hear so many old wives tales regarding gypsum. I uh, make it do this, make it do that. But as a general rule of thumb, no, uh, gypsum is not going to unlock anything. Uh, there's, there, there's not really a whole lot you can do to unlock things. Uh, the plants tend to do a good job of unlocking things. Um, or you need to be applying some mild acids to the soil to unlock things or dissolve bicarbonates and carbonates in the soil if you have excess carbonates. But if you're calcium deficient and you have low pH, you typically don't have excess carbonates in the soil. So then you're back on the lime train at that point. But if you have good pH, if you have do, uh, good pH, then yes, gypsum would be a good fit there if you're calcium deficient and you have a, uh, a, a pH that you want to maintain. <clears throat> Is crabgrass a scam? Um, if people begin planting it into their yard and making claims about it being the best at something, um, even if people want to uh, consider it um, uh, the best weed or whatever, yes, I'll call it a scam and I will put it through its paces. I hate when uh, when uh, people are confident enough to refer to something as the best. Um, and if you ever see me refer to something as best, typically I do it out of jest. Why that rhymes, I don't know. Let's see what's going on in the music track. Okay, all right, I had enough of that. Uh, using Pennant Magnum. Uh, wait a second. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me go up. It jumped down to the bottom. Uh, where am I? Where am I? Using pennant magnum applications this spring over a lot of acreage concerned with ill effects delayed green up. Um, yeah, it's possible. <laughs> it is definitely possible. Um, you know, timing is, is very critical on it. And the only reason I would ever recommend like for sure, for certain going out with pennant magnum and making it a part of your program is if you're trying to diversify against uh, uh, herbicide resistance or you absolutely need a pre-emergent effect for uh, for nut sedge and you have turf types that are sensitive to sul sulfentrazone and you're trying to use it as a rotation against um, a PPOI like sulfentrazone. So... I, yeah, if you feel like using pennant, by all means, I'm not going to tell you not to. But remember, pennant is not very strong on grassy weeds. It's going to be strong on sedges primarily. Uh, that's what it's it's good at. Maybe a few broadleaf weeds, um, but not in what I would consider an exceptional or good or great pre-emergent by any stretch or means of the imagination. But as part of a program, an overall program, it can be a good tool in the toolbox. So, Yes, it is possible, and I'd love to shy you away and tell you that it's um, uh, a, a, a for sure something you don't have to worry about, but unfortunately it is. And it's just kind of the nature of using that herbicide and why it's not more popular than it is. Um, I plan on applying prefix with my pre application in the spring. However, I have seen use cases on golf greens. Uh, are there any added benefits to applying prefix throughout the growing season? Yes, there is, but the... the um, uh, you're, you're, so you're going to enter 
a a period of sloughing of roots, right, as you move into the summer. And um, and yes, you can use it specifically in that situation too, as as uh, uh, prior to the onset of stress, as a, a way to manage abiotic stress. That is one way to do that. Um, you you definitely can. There's the silica component of it too, which can help you out in s- s- certain scenarios like that. Um, but understand, just back your rates down when you're using it then. So the rate recommendations are going to be between one to two. The warmer it is outside, typically I like the lower the rates. Um, it's just something I've seen with uh, with keeping some of the temperatures, I've, I've keeping everything heated now. And everything's cooking at about 90 degrees. And those higher rates, I'm applying way over rate right now to test the upper limit. So I'm getting closer to four, five, six ounces per thousand square feet. And the heat is not playing well with it as you start getting into 3x the label rate. Um, You start getting some growth regulation effects out of it, like extreme growth regulation effects. So uh, it just, just, yes, you can. Uh, but you have to be a little more cognizant of what you're doing. Definitely don't overdo it. Uh, tell us how we should be mixing prefix and prodiamine, please, sir. So you can run them in conjunction with one another, or you can run them separately with one another. And that's totally up to you. What I would recommend is that as you begin to see growth in your turf grass in the start of the spring or whenever you're making your pre emergent application is when you would want to time your prefix applications. And typically two would be sufficient. One would be sufficient Two would be like extra added insurance on the thing there. So no reason to go all crazy and be applying it every two weeks, every one week or something like that. Give it 30 days between each application and just call it good. And and don't overthink it. Don't overcomplicate it. Follow the label and and be done and be done with it. Remember, it's the primary mode of action is going to be through foliar absorption. In order to be fuller, in order for foliar absorption to occur, there has to be some a little bit of growing today, uh, a little bit of growing taking place. Uh, so just keep that in mind. You want to see a little bit of growth, a little bit of green on the leaves, then you're making your application. Uh, oh. <laughs> I see you, Mr. Camillo. <laughs> That's right. That's right. OSU Turf Man. That's some inside uh, baseball right there. Look at this. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. All right. I mean, I can, I can, I can do Sundays. That is no problem. Uh, can you explain how ammonium sulfate works differently from urea in the soil? Yeah, uh, that's uh, pretty, pretty easy here. So, urea is going to react with urease in the soil and form ammonia, which is then going to go through its own series of conversions. Um, at that point, uh, it can be taken up as a, ammonia or ammonium. Uh, you have to remember it's going to exist in a gas stand at that point. And that's why you oftentimes see uh, a higher instance of loss uh, with urea than you typically do um, with with ammonium sulfate. But that still kind of comes down to individual soil conditions. And we could spend 30 minutes on that topic alone. But um, ammonium sulfate is different in the sense that you're dealing, you're starting with ammonium, which is NH4 and sulfate, right? And as uh, these goes into solution. You might get some direct ammonium uptake, but typically that's going to react with the niter bacteria in the soil and convert into um, uh, nitrite and then nitrate. Uh, and as it does, it's going to release hydrogen ions in the soil. And it's those hydrogen ions in the soil that are going to have uh, an acidifying effect in the soil. Now, when you hear acidifying effect, it's not going to take you from a soil pH of 7 down to a 5.5 in a single season or really in two seasons. It's not going to take you from a 5.5 to a 3.5 in a single season. It's not that strong. I'll give you an example. Uh, Just putting ammonium sulfate into solution is going to have a pH of 5.5. Once it goes through its its process, I, I believe... Depending on what you're starting, if you have a pH of 7, if you wanted to neutralize all the ammonium sulfate that you put down, you would need somewhere around 300 pounds an acre of lime, uh, which is a pretty minuscule amount of lime uh, when it comes to the amount of ammonium sulfate that you apply. So, um, yeah, there we go. Ryan Norris said, tell us about your snow driving experience. 
Uh, it's over on my wife's Instagram, Tsunami Asami. You can go check that out. But we were driving through a snowstorm in Roanoke, Virginia at, um, at 10 o'clock at night. And it took me uh, until 2 o'clock in the morning to get from Roanoke to out of the snowstorm when I crossed into Tennessee. And it was snowing so hard that I had lost complete sight of the lines and the interstate was completely covered. You could not see the road anymore, nor could you see any of the exits as you were driving. And I'm going like 25, 30 miles an hour for, I mean, literally for 148 miles, I was going 25 to 30 miles an hour. Um, and finally, I caught up to a plow truck and an 18 wheeler, and I stayed behind them the entire time. And I felt a little better because I could just stay behind the 18 wheeler and not have to worry about drifting off off the road or whatever. But that was the worst driving experience I've had, which is funny. On this monitor, I see Trent Burns here. One of the other worst driving experiences I've had was when I was driving to Augusta, Georgia in a U-Haul. And um, I was going through somewhere in Mississippi at the time, and the fog was so dense I completely lost sight of the road. And that was after sleeping like an hour and a half. And, and boy, that was a tough time. Uh, but this was the scariest. I had never clinched a steering wheel like that. And I was so exhausted by the time I got home, we got home at four o'clock, four 15 in the morning, something like that. And by the time I got home, I was so exhausted from the amount of paranoia and anxiety and stress of navigating that snowstorm. I could have slept for two days. No lie. It was, it was awful. So that's my snow driving experience. The only snow I've ever driven through. Uh, uh, that was like that. And the, hopefully the last time I ever have to do that. Uh, so you will be involved in a granular fert that will be available to us this year. Yes. You can go to Renovo.eco to learn more about the project that I am working on. Hey, Matt, kelp used in the heat of summer, good or bad idea. Also, what are the negatives of too much kelp and turf grass? I'm up in the great white north. All right, Yard Smart. So uh, this is pretty simple. In the summer, there. All right, so let's talk about kelp in general. Kelp in general it contains um, uh, plant hormones, right? So auxins, gibberellins, cytokinins. And by applying kelp, you manipulate the hormone concentrations within the plant. The problem is, is that at higher temperatures, it, the turf grasses can be a little bit sensitive towards excessive amounts of hormones, right? It'd be like staying all jacked up on testosterone all the time. And, you know, occasionally you got to you got to cycle off. What is it the bodybuilders do? They cycle off and they have to take a, um, uh, what is it, an estrogen blocker or, 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 or whatever they have to take to, to force their body to restart making its own testosterone or whatever. When you get into the heat and you're forcing it to grow and forcing it to grow and forcing it to grow, but the conditions are not conducive for growth then you're going to create a problem. It's like taking steroids to continue to exercise even though you've got an injury. And the injury in this instance would be the abiotic stress of the temperature. So you can, you just have to be careful with it. You don't want to overdo it. And the question is, is what are the negatives of too much turf? You burn the grass. That's what it will do. We'll burn the grass. Um, and it's not just me. You can ask people like Paul Outlaw about experiences of burning grass with with kelp and kelp products. It just it happens. You get you get excited. You get out there. You're spraying willy nilly, and you end up burning something. It happens. <laughs> I saw I saw the lawn stripes say "burn permit for the lawn or the shed." <laughs> uh, <laughs> is POA annua truly an annual or is it perennial? I feel like it's both if that's even possible. So it depends on where you are in the world, right? So for instance, some places, uh, uh, thank you, Trent Burns. Um, I mean, if you go back to the beginning, you can, you can, uh, you can kind of uh, go. Uh, you know, I, it was one of the early things I talked about, Trent. Um, so, in certain areas, the further north you go, it is an annual. You'll see it as one of the dominant turf types on golf greens. Uh, even like up in, in northern California, you'll see where the old famous Pebble Beach is, uh, has Poa annua greens. So in those instances, yes, it exists as uh, it is perennial because it never gets warm enough to die. Where I'm at in Knoxville or in everywhere else I've lived in the south, it dies every year due to the heat. So in that instance, it is 100% an annual. So really, it just has to do with where you live. 
Um, hey, Matt, both Dep10 and MFT say on the level that they should be applied more than seven times per season. If I'm using both, that means a total of seven, correct? Yes. Uh, also, if I'm using both prefix and depth scythe, how does that fit into the calculation of the maximum? It's not. Uh, it's it's not because of the the mechanism. So uh, that will not fit into the maximum. Uh, that would apply specifically to depth 10 and MFT. And I was actually talking to somebody about this earlier today. I have gone as high as eight ounces per acre. Um, I'm sorry, eight ounces per thousand square feet, not in a single application, but over the course of a year. So that's many applications going down uh, every two weeks. And I did not run into problems at eight ounces. I have not gone over eight ounces per thousand square feet. Cumulative through the year, do not do that in a single use application. You will kill the grass. Uh, another question, what are your thoughts on corn gluten meal for crabgrass pre emerger Pretty much all we can use because everything else is banned in Canada. Yarn Smart, good luck, man. Good luck. It, it may work for you where you are. My experience with it has been just absolutely awful. It has not been good. I've never had success with it. I've tried the three-year thing. I've tried applying more when they tell me to apply more. It, it ended up creating a, a damn near impenetrable layer at the surface of my soil and it ended up causing me more problems than in the turf grass than it did anything else. And I swore it off and I would never revisit it. So my experience with corn gluten meal is a very negative experience. There are people out there that swear by it and so be it. And I don't know, they may be in a funky territory. They may be up there in Canada with you. I call it funky just because it's foreign to me, not because I actually think it's funky yard smart. Uh, when, when is optimal time to for spot treating with a new? What would you expect to see on POA A and POA trip? Um, when is the optimal time? When it's, uh, 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 when it's growing at its optimal rate. So uh, as your fescue picks up in growth rate or, you, yeah, as your fescue is starting to pick up and move into that max growth rate, that is when it would be most sensitive towards a new. What would you expect to see? You would expect to see growth retardation and you would expect to see discoloration, not death. It may hide it. It may hide it. It may suppress it but it's probably not going to kill it as far as I know. Uh, does your phosphite product have peptide power? No, uh, no, it does not. Uh, best way to prevent brown patch, best way to use ammonium sulfate and what time of year here in Tampa, Florida, go bucks. <laughs> All right. Uh, so best ways to prevent brown patch is uh, one, make sure you are, uh, you have a solid sound agronomic program and when i say a solid sound agronomic program i mean that you have good soil ph uh you are applying uh, nutrients at the appropriate timing based on your soil structure and you're applying the appropriate nutrients based on the information your soil test gives you all of those are going to be necessary in giving you your best effort in preventing brown patch purely from a, uh, um, a an agronomic standpoint chances are where you are in tampa your pressure is still going to be high enough that no matter how good of an agronomic program you're going to run you may want to consider if you have a history of brown patch you may want to consider applying preventative fungicides and you would do that prior to the onset of brown patch. So typically there where you are, you would see it in the spring and the fall. So you would begin making those applications when you have history of them breaking it within 30 days of when they historically break out. And you can kind of follow the temperature uh, patterns where they do break out, make notes of those when, what the temperatures are and when you see it break out and then apply it preventatively when you fall into those weather patterns. Typically for uh, warm season grass like that is going to be uh, in those ambient air temperatures of 75 to 55 range where you're going to see it on something like St. Augustine in Tampa, Florida. Um, best way to use ammonium sulfate is when you are applying nitrogen, you use ammonium sulfate as your nitrogen source. No real magic there. Uh, what's up, Steve Darcy? What are you doing, dude? Uh, hey, Matt, question on the depth. Glue, the label states uh, with glucoheptanate say not to mix with phosphorus. I use a rock phosphorus in liquid form. I'm wondering if that applies to all phosphorus or just soluble. Uh, I would A rock phosphorus is not soluble. If it's in liquid form, I would say that is a, um, a suspension of rock phosphorus. Should be fine. 
but I honestly do not know. I would jar test that. And if you don't mind, Steve, when you do jar test that, let me know. And also, I'd be interested in learning more about your liquid rock phosphate. Send me a link on that, too. I'd like to look into it a little bit. Uh, Ultraset termiticide, off-label use on lawns as an uh, alternative to a cellar friend. Um, okay, this is one of those things that, listen, if there's ever a time that we are being scoped in the lawn care industry harder than ever, it is right now. So, Ionic Adams, what I would tell you to do is don't risk it. Don't risk it. If you get caught in this in in the type of environment that we're in right now, it will not be good. So, unfortunately, I can't tell you what to do. I can't tell you what to do, but all I can say is that you have to take the determination whether or not you could live with the outcome if that level of risk did backfire on you. Um, no grass growing right now here in Michigan. Boy, I hate it for y'all. It's uh, my fesky's growing here, so you know, not much, <laughs> not much worse. Worried about this preventing the grass to fill in. Um, y yes and no. I'm I've got a video that's already scripted. It just has to be recorded and then released. Um, and, and I can share with you is that yes, dimension, prodiamine, all your dinitro anilines, uh, pendimethalin will all inhibit the fill in or germination of those types. Uh, if it's Kentucky bluegrass, um, yes, it does knock down rhizomatic activity by about 50%. You still get rhizomatic activity. It's not going to inhibit all rhizomatic activity, but it will decrease by about 50% according to a study by Rutgers University. And I'll be talking about that in the video. Uh, so it's just kind of a necessary evil. Can you still grow it in uh, with uh, and, and apply a pre? Yes. <laughs> yes, you can. So in my opinion, I wouldn't worry about it. I would just go ahead and be aggressive with the fertilizer. Chances are it's going to fill in and be sure to get your pre-emergent down because what you don't want to have happen is all those bare spots fill up with crabgrass and then you spend the rest of the season fighting crabgrass because the crabgrass moved into it before the grass get thick enough versus if you would have applied a pre-emergent, it would have kept the crabgrass out and it may have been slower to fill in, but eventually it did fill in and the crabgrass never did come in and therefore you had greater density overall in the long run. Uh, I live in Maryland, Maryland. If I do aerate and seed in early March, would a crabgrass pre-emergent in the second week of April be too late? Uh, if you used dithiapyr at the high rate as a liquid, as a with a surfactant, uh, it would be good for you. Uh, Usama, I have a question. I said, that, I mean, I have a video that's called uh, uh, Dithiapyr. You're probably using it wrong. Uh, I highly recommend you watch that video and it will uh, help you on that understand. Uh, uh, can you hit on Cali low soluble rates? Can we melt and spray? Um, oh, uh, wait a second. Wait a second. Let me hang on. Hang on, it took me a second. I was like, well, what's, what's going on here? What are we doing? Um, so yes, you can because it is, it's pure sulfate of potash, right? Um, that, uh, and we spray a, uh, a, a liquid material over top of that, but, uh, yes, it is soluble. It's just that sulfate of potash is not very soluble in general. It's very difficult to melt down. Uh, it's hard to get a lot in the solution about a pound per gallon. Maximum, absolute maximum is what you're going to get into solution. So, that's the one uh, uh, you just, you got to be careful. Yes, you can melt and spray it. Uh, oh, man. Good old days driving to Minnetonka from Illinois in the middle of winter. I could not handle it, Izzy. I could not do it, man. Uh, I'm sick of nut sedge. I'm going to lay a battle for my Bermuda down here in Mississippi. If you were me, when would you apply? What? I have sedge, ha uh, sedge hammer and vexus on hand. So what I would do is starting somewhere around um, uh, the 1st of April, I would apply four ounces per acre of sulfentrazone. Starting the 1st of May, I would apply four ounces per acre of sulfentrazone. Uh, the 1st of June, I would apply four ounces per acre of sulfentrazone for a total of 12 ounces per acre. 
Then if I had any breakthrough after that, that is when I would use the Vexus or Sedgehammer. But chances are you would not have very much breakthrough after those three blanket applications. What is the best time of year to adjust soil pH? When you feel like doing it. Um, if you're trying to raise your pH really anytime, if you're trying to lower your pH, probably when it's actively growing, because if you're using like elemental sulfur, uh, again, you're relying on bacterial activity and bacterial activity is going to be highest or even active at all. Typically when the plants are actively growing as well, Sandy and Tepper, I saw that soil test and I was laughing, uh, because and and that is about average for what I see on calcium levels in Texas. You know, the other day, someone was talking about their soil test and they had, I don't know, somewhere between one and 3000 parts per million of calcium. And what people do not understand is that if you go to uh, Texas, uh, you'll see 20,000 parts per million of calcium in, in the soil. Uh, so totally, totally different thing going on there in Texas. Texas is different. It is different. You kind of you got uh, 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 East Texas, which is totally different than the desert. West Texas and totally different soil structures. It's just it's different. And boy, you you better put your big boy pants on if you want your stuff to look good in Texas. It's not easy. Um, so and thanks for sending that to me, Sandy. That was, that was definitely a good one. Uh, what about a tenacity triclopyr application in late April to knock emerging Bermuda in the head? New to fescue reno. If you can't tell, I bought a bottle of tenacity and I'm trying to use it. <laughs> uh, yeah, you can do it there too. It will knock, uh, uh Bermuda back. It's not going to offer really any kind of long-term benefit there unless you put it on a program. The the tenacity, if you want to use tenacity, tenacity is best used as part of a tenacity program. All your HPPD inhibitors, uh, mesotrione or topramazone, need to be executed as part of a program, as a singular app here and there, randomly, sporadically kind of thing. It's not doing you any favors. And, and to be honest, at that point, uh, you're, you're really burning cash and you're going to decrease the efficacy of the product long term because you're going to be passing on a lot of weeds that know how to handle a tenacity application because you're not going to get a complete kill with it. So in that instance, if, if you wanted to do it, yeah, you could, but put it on a tenacity in triclopyr program where you're going to hit it every 30 days, four, five, six times over a six month period uh, to knock the Bermuda out entirely. Uh, Ryan Smith said, can I mix DSMA with metsulfuron methyl or halosulfuron DSMA by itself? Is it killing the paspalin? I'm targeting a uh, grass type is Bermuda in Australia. Yes, you can. But if DSMA is not working, I would look at number one, the rate you're applying and number two, your application frequency. You're going to have to do this, um, uh, uh, in, on either a two or three week interval. So I would make an applicant and you're going to need to do this with three applications, the best chance I had of success of having uh, uh, control on Dallas grass, um, you're, what you're calling paspalum, I guess, um, is what I'm referring to as Dallas grass, is um, combining it with Celsius gave me one of my biggest responses. Uh, Celsius and and DSMA in your in your instance would be would be best, and that would be two applications somewhere around 21 days apart. Or if you're doing just straight DSMA, I would be doing applications probably closer to 14 days apart and at least three of them in sequential uh, uh, timing. Then, of course, you also want to make sure you're applying it in summer. I know it's summer where you are right now, but you need heat. So I'm saying over 85 degrees, over 85 degrees in order to have good efficacy out of that type of product. We'll be using Edgeless PGR my Bermuda this year, per recommended by Ray. Uh, why use uh, fluprimidol fluprimidol in combination with Trinaxpac ethyl as opposed to Tnex alone? So you're gripping both sides of the growth regulator aisle right there, right? So you've got a little bit of growth regular activity. Um, so there's, I did a video on growth regulators where you, you've got group one and you got group twos and some are going to be root absorbed. Some are going to be foliarly absorbed, um, diversifying your active ingredients. When you go for a, a growth regulator option means you can lower rates of each, uh, calm down on the amount of collateral damage that ends up taking place, the amount of phytotoxicity that takes place and get a longer duration out of your growth regulator applications. So that's what 
And that's why he would recommend combining those versus just running TNX alone. Uh, I applied ammonium sulfate at a half pound per K on tall fescue. I'm in Northern California and temps are starting to hit the 60s during the day and 40 at night. Grass is greening up now. Next app. Um, so what I would do is if you head over to subvertapk.com and go to the program planner, T dot, uh, you will uh, be able to uh, uh, type right in there. Uh, uh, your soil test information and your weather historical data. And it will tell you, you know, so it will tell you something like, okay, you need uh, a half pound of N for the month of February. And, uh, and you're going to need uh, three quarters of a pound in for the month of March. And so if you apply it on, on the 15th, you know, chances are, if you're using straight ammonium sulfate, we'll say 30 days. So we'll say probably about 30 days. You need to make your next application for the amount of nutrient removal that is going to take place. If you go to that, you'll see, I've got a whole video for it and it'll explain how to use the spreadsheet to tell you exactly what um, uh, exactly you need per individual month. So I would do it that way, which is algorithmically generated versus just following a random, seemingly random schedule. Um, uh, don't, uh, yeah, you do, Breeze Lawns. You have King Range Blue Stem, and there ain't nothing fun about that either. Uh, should I go look with one of the dev stuff or the Renovo stuff? Renovo stuff, I have no idea when it's going to be ready. It, uh, hoping within the next month or so. Can't make any promises. Month, six weeks, somewhere around there. I don't know. Uh, but if you're itching to use something, want to try something new, then feel free to check out the depth stuff. Uh, it's a little bit different. One of the components we used in the carboner fertilizers, um, but there's a lot more flexibility with the liquids because there's so many individual inputs that you can choose from. Like, for instance, if you have acidic soil and you want a specific nitrogen source for acidic soil um, that will help buffer against acidic soil, well, we've got a product like CNOS that works exactly for soils with acidic soil. So this is kind of some fun stuff we can do with liquids that you can't really do a whole lot with granular. Um, what do you think about using both Lesco Spectator? Uh, low rate doesn't touch the pass pound on the high rate smoke the Bermuda down the ground. Okay, Ryan, hang on. That is exactly what it's supposed to do. That is exactly what it's supposed to do. It will burn down your Bermuda grass. So those types of applications are called burn and return. If you've never heard me say it, I'll say it again. Burn and return is, is when you're using DSMA like that, that is what to expect from it. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it freak you out. Just continue doing what you're supposed to be doing and, and don't worry about it. You will be fine. My wife is in the chat. Hello, Asami. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being the number one big fan. <laughs> um, uh, what do you think about using both Lesco Spectator and Lesco Manicure in a fungicide program? I live in the transition zone. Uh, Steve, I have never heard of Lesco Manicure, but I'll look it up right now. Uh, it is excellent disease control. It is chlorothalonil. Uh, so this is not labeled for home lawns or residential lawns. So I would not use this. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it's it, it, chlorothalonil is the old daconil. Uh, it's a great product. But again, it's one of those things you get caught using that your ass is going to be just held to the fire. Uh, there is some uh, 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 water runoff issues with it, and that's why they pulled it from residential use. Again, one of those things, they don't want to take it away from golf. They don't want to take it away from agriculture, so they'll take it away from lawn care because it's the lawn care guys that are a problem, right? So, uh, unfortunately, you can't use uh, the manicure product in a fungicide uh, program. Uh, it's 35 degrees Celsius here at the moment. Yeah, it's hot. So yeah, you've got the temperatures. The burn down is totally normal. Run with it. Better purchase a thousand dollars on one inch of sand aeration verticut or a thousand dollars on a real mower. Uh, a thousand dollars on a real mower would be your better bet, Trent. I, I know you, and you would be much happier with that than anything else. Johnny Fescue, stop it, sir. That is unnecessary. Unnecessary. Um, getting ready to use Poe Constrictor with Atrazine in St. Augustine for Bermuda for the first time. Your recommendation. Thanks for everything, Matt. Uh, Chase, remember, part of a program, a single application isn't going to get it. You're going to have to stay on top of it. 
Um, and I would probably start that as you see things start to actively grow into the fall. So you want to interrupt carbohydrate storage in the fall because as your daylight hours begin shrinking, so we think about like flowers and stuff, when you start losing daylight, uh, when you when you start losing daylight, then um, uh, the the plants are uh, like for instance that's when uh, flowers and stuff are going to start flowering and you know bud set starts and all that fun stuff. Uh, and, and, and same thing in turf, right? So carbohydrate storage is taking place. So if you apply something that is going to interrupt photosynthesis and interrupt that carbohydrate storage in the fall. Uh, um, that is going to give you your best chance of success. Chase Smith, realistically, is going to take longer than one season, so don't give up and don't think one application will solve it either. Um, I did a test where I did one area with DSM and M MSM and another one with DSMA and Hal Furon about one week ago. We'll hit it again in two weeks and report back. Please do. Please let me know. Um, okay, so what if I pour my tenacity on UT football? <laughs> I don't know what I think about Hypo yet, man. I don't know what I think. But I'll tell you, you'd probably have more success out of your tenacity pouring it on UT football. If that's if you expect it to be a dumpster fire. Um, and then you would be using it as a single-use product. Uh, Martin Matty has joined the PLC group. Coincidence? Uh, that is a coincidence. That ain't me, uh, un unfortunately. So, you want to tell that guy next time you see him, or if he does become active in there, you tell him you tell him to go go kick rocks. I almost said a bad word there for a second. <laughs> uh, could I combine depth ten with RGS on tall fescue and transition zone between Charlotte and Rock Hill? How many consecutive apps of depth for best results? Um, y yes, you can. Be careful uh, because both of those are going to be hotter products in the if you're applying them in the heat. Um, how many consecutive apps for depth for best results? Uh, it depends on your rate. So you'll see kind of some general recommendations where lower rates for more frequent applications, higher rates for less frequent applications. Uh, but for each individual application, and again, where I would do this, you have to remember is the root promoting peptide, right? So. Um, as you begin to slough off your root system, that is when you begin making those applications. So prior to the onset of abiotic stress will give you your biggest return on investment. And again, your rate will dictate um, what ends up, um, uh, your rate will dictate your frequency. And uh, also you'll see some limits on the label for the number of applications you make in a year. So there you go. Jeremy Wilson, that is not true. I did not do that. Not at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, Pruitt deserved a, another year. Um, I do too. Uh, I, I wasn't necessarily excited to see him go. And I've got to say the whole thing and the whole way that shook out with, uh, with UT and Phil former and the investigation and, uh, McDonald's and all that stuff. I don't know. It was just crazy. Are peptides as effective as winter as, and as warmer temps? No, because your uptake, you have to remember, it's like fertilizer right now. If you went and dumped a bunch of fertilizer on your lawn right now, what would it do? Not much because it's not actively growing. It's not actively taking in the material. The whole reason we had to design prefix the way we did and start using things at the nanoscale was to help it get into the plant in cooler weather because you can't rely on uh, diffusion at that point of balancing salts on the inside and the outside of the leaf or rely on uh, root uptake. So that's why we had to design that product the way we did uh, because no, in, in general, no, it is not. Uh, it has to be formulated in a very specific way in order to help in that type of, of situation. All right, look at this. Before before we even made it an entire hour, I made it wait. Uh, I made it all the way to the end of the chat. Um, so a couple things we've got coming up. Like I said, the Grass Factor team is growing. That's real excited for me. Uh, uh, I've got a video I'm going to be posting real soon. Uh, it's just fun. It is so cheesy, and I'm kind of doing this as as a joke. It's about 60% of a joke is the whole reason I'm releasing this. And I'm just curious what ends up happening when I put it out. So we're doing a little A-B split testing on this next video that's coming out. And then following up right behind that, we have a revamp of Prodimine versus Dithiapyr. And then following that, 
I'm going to go ahead and get back to the scam series. I need to, to let a little time pass before I started going hard on the on the scam series. And I was going to do uh, liquid detach, uh, 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 but I opted against going out with that one first. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to go with liquid fertilizer, then granular fertilizer, and then liquid detach. So we'll play a little fun there. we got some things upcoming too. I'm uh, going to be doing some work with the neighbor dominator. Of course, going to be doing some work with turf therapy. My dog, man, we had a long talk last week. It was it was awesome. We had so much fun talk uh, talking. So shout out to Robert Palmer. Um, and uh, thank you for all you do. And thank you for uh, 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 talking to me the other day. It was that was that was a lot of fun. A uh, couple more questions that came in after repeatedly spraying Bermuda growing in the sidewalk crack with non-selective herbicide. I'm starting to think I can save money. <laughs> uh, tall fescue in South Carolina, June, July, and August heat with MPK water and fungicide already on point. What extras are you putting on the lawn? So again, that there is where I start to utilize biostimulants in that particular area to try and get that competitive advantage to keep the lawn from going dormant. Because you have to remember in June, July, and August in South Carolina, tall fescue is trying to go dormant. That's what it wants to do. So what can you add to your program at that point to overcome abiotic stress that would send the plant into dormancy? Well, I feel like I've got some good options there for you to do that. Um, it, particularly salicylic acid is one that's researched and works incredibly well. And then of course the peptides have been working really well for us too. Um, so that is where the direction I would go, either alternating those, using them kind of one or another. The hotter it got outside, the more I would start to lean on salicylic acid. Uh, and then if like I had rain or something like that, or in the forecast, then maybe I would go back towards the peptides and that. So thank you everybody for coming in. Oh, the other one too is I'm going to do a whole one on organic fertilizer. Oh, I can't wait for this. I cannot wait for this uh, because one of my favorite things, one of my favorite things is, um, is what's the difference between organic nitrogen and regular nitrogen? I'll give you a hint. Not much. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you on the flip side. Have a good evening.